Welcome to Picture Healer Channel. This is Shi Tian. Today we want to talk about feng shui and the garden. Depends on where you live. You might have a big yard or very little outdoor space. Maybe you only have a little balcony or a little outdoor space next to your front entrance. The garden is an extension of our living space. So we also want to have good feng shui in our garden space. So what is good feng shui in garden? Basically, we want to have good energy flow and uh, lively energy. So that means the plants should be healthy and growing. All the structures are well maintained and not falling apart. And the garden style is inspiring to you and fits your lifestyle. That means the garden space is well maintained regularly. So there's no overgrown plants or weeds. And a good feng shui garden is not about the size of the garden or how much money you spend in the garden. A bigger garden gives you a bigger stage for you to play with, but it can also be harder to maintain. On the other hand, if you put in a lot of thoughts into the gardening design, and spend a lot of time tending your garden, watering the plants, and take care of their needs. They will grow beautifully, and that is a good feng shui. And the garden evolves over time. It's just like our house. It's difficult to fix it one time and expect it to stay that way forever. We all grow and change. Our lifestyle and our taste changes over time. So we have to adapt and figure out what works best for you at this time. And it's okay if your current garden is not the way you really want it to be in the future. It takes time to create your dream garden and it takes time to maintain too. So that's a long-term commitment. The more effort you put into your garden, the more reward you will get. So what type of plants are lucky and what type of plants we should avoid according to Chinese feng shui? And I'm sure you know Chinese people love red. Any red flower or bright color flowers are very lucky because it represents the energy and the growth. And white is an unlucky color most Chinese people want to avoid. But I think this is subjective. A lot of white flowers can be very beautiful too. If you want to plant a lot of white flower, maybe add in a little bit of color to make it look more cheerful. As for the selection of plants, it really depends on your local environment. It's better to follow your local zoning for your gardening plants. In traditional feng shui, the lucky plants include peony flowers, evergreen trees, and different types of fruit trees because fruits can be symbols of abundance. And the shape that's considered bad feng shui is the weeping type of plants, such as a willow tree, because a weeping tree can be associated with weeping or crying, so that's not very lucky in feng shui. There are five element shapes you can use to balance your garden design. And one rule in feng shui is to have more curve. A curvy line or a curving path is more natural. It's softer and more artistic. A curvy line tends to be better feng shui and better luck. If you are designing your garden, you should pay attention to the walkway the traffic flow, and creating different zones or different interests in your garden. The pathway can be achieved by adding step stones or building stairs or walkways. And you can plan different zones, maybe place some seating in one area and have a cup of tea or coffee. And a different zone might be your vegetable garden or an area of just grass or lawns. And don't forget you have an area for all your tools and supplies. Maybe you can add in a small greenhouse 
so you have more flexibility in planting your garden. It can be overwhelming when you collect all the tools, parts, fertilizers, and different supplies. So that should be part of the whole design. The next one is the fun part of gardening. It's about garden decor, statues, or adding some personal touch in your garden. Many people like to hand wind chimes, or add a bird feeder, add some water feature, or windmills in your garden. So there's always some sound, some movement, and some live animals to bring the garden to life. That's an easy way to enhance the feng shui in your garden. And these items don't have to be expensive. You can add second-hand items or repurposed items from your house. No matter what style of garden you have, formal or casual, urban or traditional cottage, the design should follow the nature. That includes the direction of your building and the direction of the sunlight. And you have to learn different characters of plants. And it's very easy to learn now because of the internet. You can search everything online, find out the best place for the lighting, fertilizer, soil, and watering requirements. If you follow the natural, a garden will thrive and blossom. So design and keeping a garden is very therapeutic and even meditative because you have to attend the garden regularly, observe any changes in your garden, and give what plants need at the right time. Maybe they need watering, fertilizer, or pest control. If you are a busy person, plan the garden to your busy lifestyle and choose low-maintenance plants. The garden should be a reflection of you and a place for you to retreat. The garden is like a miniature world. If we can pay attention and listen, we can see the cycles of nature, and we can learn so much from our small garden. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.